everyone, welcome again to Ingenious House channel. In today's video, we are going to solve an example about fatigue failure. So if you need to review the basic concepts, please tap on the link above and check our previous video. In this example, we've got a rotating shaft that is subjected to a constant load that is equal to 6.8 kN with two ball bearings at end A and end D. We are going to estimate the life of this part. By the life of a part, we mean the number of cycles it can bear. So I will write here M. Before solving this question, we need to know why it is known as a fatigue failure problem. Look at this figure. This is a rotating shaft with a constant load. If you remember from the previous video, a rotating shaft will cause equal magnitudes of compression and tension at the same time, but with opposite signs. So having this will help us to figure out this is a completely reversed cycle problem. Now that we know this is a reverse stress problem, we can solve it much easier. The question has also given us some information about the material and the surface condition. The material is mentioned here and we know that the material is machined. Having this machined here will help us estimate the factor Ka which I mentioned previously. We have the material and that is In all engineering handbooks, the SUT of these materials are given. Having the SUT, now we can find out the value of SE prime. But which relation should we use for finding SE prime? Since this value is below, we can use the equation. So SE prime is going to be the half of this amount. Now that we have the SE prime, we should find out the marine factors. But why should we find out marine factors? Because this SE prime is experimental and we need to find out something realistic. We're looking for the real SE. For finding out marine factors, we begin with Ka that I mentioned in the first slide. As you know, we have a machined surface. For a machined surface, we are given the amount of A and B. So all we have to do is to plug in these values in this formula. SUT is powered by B. This equation will give us, now we have the value of Ka, but what about Kb? This is as easy as Ka, why? Because we have the diameter of our shaft, the diameter is, now that we have the diameter, we can use one of these equations, 32 is in this range. So we have to use this equation will be equal to remember that the value you put here is in millimeter. We have Ka and Kb now. But what about other factors? In this particular example, all other factors are equal to 1 regarding Kc, Kg, Ke and Kf. But let's see why Kc is equal to 1. If you remember from the previous video, I told you that in the test of rotating beam, a bending load was applied. You have a bending load like this one, you'll have to put Kc equal to 1. But for other cases, like axial or torsion, you'll have to use these values. But for now, Kc is equal to 1. What happens to Ke and Kd? Kd is 
completely dependent on the temperature you are working with. But we are not giving any information about the temperature in the question. Anyway, there is a table here that gives information about the temperature. Each temperature you are given some parameters. Having these parameters, KD will be equal to this equation. But as I mentioned in this question, we are not given any information about KD or the temperature, so we assume that KD is equal to 1. Now let's see why KE is equal to 1. KE totally depends on reliability, but in the question, there is nothing mentioned as reliability. So we assume that the reliability in this case is equal to 1. But if you want to know other cases, you will have to look at this table more carefully. For other cases, Ke will be equal to this equation. But for now, we assume that it is 1. With having all the marine factors, now we can estimate the real SE or the real endurance limit. Other factors here are 1, like KC. So I didn't write them, but plugging the values of KA and KB will lead us to the real SE. We've got the values of SE and SUC. But what about the number of cycles? This is what we have to find now. Before anything else, we assume that this problem is of the finite lifetime kind. For the finite lifetime, we have some relations. If you remember from the previous video, we mentioned some parameters known as A and B. A is defined as this equation. And B is... But in order to calculate A and B, we need to find out the amount of F. How to calculate the amount of F? If you remember from the previous video, in order to calculate this, we should use a diagram. This is the diagram we need to use to find out the amount of F. SUT is equal to this value. This amount is approximately equal to 100 KSI. On the x-axis, we find 100 and continuing this line, will give us the value of F. With having the value of F, now obtaining A and B is easy. Now that we have A and B, we can find the value of n. But wait a moment, what is the sigma reversed? It is actually SF. But did we calculate anything known as SF? Not yet. This is what we are going to do in the next steps. In order to find out the sigma reversed or SF, we need to use this relation. You remember this relation? Yes, it was in your Mechanics of Materials book, so it is completely familiar to you. But we should find out the amount of M max. It means the maximum bending moment. But how to obtain it? You remember from statics how to draw a bending moment diagram. First, you need to draw the free body diagram of this component and then draw the bending moment diagram. 
you can pause this video and do it yourself, then recheck. From statics, we remember that the bending moment diagram of this component is nearly something like this. This is where the maximum bending moment occurs. But is it really the maximum bending moment? Yes. You're also thinking about the stress concentration, aren't you? I mean, in these locations, you have some stress concentrations. Stress concentrations maximize your bending moment. So this bending moment diagram is not as useful as you think. Yes, this is not the maximum bending moment. There are other places in this diagram. If you remember from statics, the bending moment of point B is equal to R1 times the distance here. Plugging the values from the static solution will lead us to this answer. But be careful that the reverse sigma is going to be something multiplied by the stress concentration factor which is known as Kf. But again you might be wondering how to obtain Kf. There are some relations for obtaining Kf. First you need to know what Q means. Q is known as the notch sensitivity. In order to find out Kf and use it in the previous equations, we need to know the value of Q and Kt. Q can be obtained from this diagram or this for the shear stress and Kt can be obtained from this diagram in all engineering handbooks. In the case of bending load, we have this figure and it helps us to calculate the amount of kt. Q can also be calculated from this diagram. By using the equation I mentioned for Q and kt, we can find out the value of kf. kf in this particular example is equal to this value will maximize the amount of banding load applied here and here. So the reverse stress or SF is finally going to be plugging the values for this equation will lead us to this answer. Then finally, we can calculate the number of cycles. We have B, A, and Sigma reversed. This value is what the question asked us. We have the number of cycles. Thanks for watching us. For more information about engineering concepts, don't forget to check our channel.